Welcome back to another FPV Guide video. I'm Bo Lorenzen, the FPV Guide, and today we're going to be taking a look at a totally different new drone. And um, before we get started, I'm going to say a lot of things I'm telling you here are probably going to be adjusted because this is a prototype drone and it's not a final production unit. It has for internal use written all over several of the parts. So moving right along, it's related both to my Phantom 4 but also to my Inspire 1. Of course I have an Inspire 1 because of its ability to pick up a Micro Four Thirds camera more than as you remember the Inspire 1 originally shipped with the X3 camera which was really a Phantom camera, a very nice Phantom camera. It really became interesting once they started shipping the X5 camera. So this is really, we're finally starting to see that drones are not just flying devices, they're flying cameras. And if you think about Nikon, Canon, Panasonic, Leica, Contax, I have both the Contax and Leica and some Nikons. And a lot of us will feel that Leica probably are not a vastly superior sensor to the Nikon or the Canon. It's a much more expensive camera but it's also often being justified because we like the user interface. And this drone here right now does what a lot of other drones do, but a lot of people out there, and you guys might be some of them, is gonna be feeling that it probably do some of the things we want in a nicer way. I really want you to keep the camera analogy in mind because that's kind of the justification for this drone. You can buy other drones that do the same thing, but I promise you, this is one of the nicer drones doing what it does right now. So let's take a look at this bird. Like I said, I got this from X Dynamics. You can look them up at xdynamics.com. And it comes in, literally ships in a really nice little backpack has a thermal thing on the back. And one of the cool things is this case is made to sit on. So if you turn it with this side up, the, the padded side, and it kind of it feels like, you know, motorcycle jacket impact foam, then you can actually sit on it while you're flying, which is kind of nice. It keeps me from carrying a chair along. Okay, so to open it up somewhere here, there is a, it's not a waterproof zipper, but it is a pretty high grade zipper. And on the side, there is a zipper pocket here and also one on the other side. So there, let's see if this camera gets the open and here you see all of it. So this is the interior. Up here, we have the controller, we have the bird and we have two batteries. And down here, we have the propellers. So let's unpack this case and take a look at the components because in this case here, the components is really what is lovely. The fit and finish of this, it's the first evening I had at home, I was just like sitting here stroking it going, ooh, nice drone. Okay, I know I'm a little overly excited because I really like the fit and finish and the design of this drone, but it doesn't right now do a lot more than my Inspire One X3 camera or my Phantom 4 Pro for that matter. So that's really what it does right now, but the package is interesting. Let's get to the package. To get it out, we have to remove the two batteries. So here's a battery. And while we're looking at the batteries right here, let me just tap on this. And up here, you can see it says 90. So it tells you how many percent it is, like 91, 92, 93, as it's charging and also as it's discharging. So this is a very easy way to see where you're at power-wise. One more battery. And then we can take the bird out. Here is the bird. I'm just gonna put it over here while we get the rest of the stuff. Then, down in the bottom here, is the charger. And really, it has, it's like a short little charging cord here. It gets a light on when it's turned on. And then the other end of the charger, 
the usual suspects. Here is the radio or the controller charger plug. And here is the plug to charge the battery. Over here in the end is one cool little feature. The propellers comes on a little board with kind of elastic here. And the way you take them out is simple. You just basically pull on it. You see if I can make it so you can see it. It comes up and you pull it clear right here. And these are surprisingly small for how big the bird is because these are only 11 and a half inches. So that's a fairly small propeller, but it goes really fast. And if you remember the Unic Q500, really big propellers that moved really slow and it was very susceptible to wind gusts that tended to turn with the wind. They're kind of going a different direction here, very fast moving, smaller propeller, which makes it very solid in the air, kind of like, you know, a racing quad, mini racing quad, really doesn't get affected by wind gusts or anything because it's a smaller prop that moves pretty fast. Anyway, so this is the props up here and they come with, on the other side, there's an extra right and left turning propeller, extra dynamics. I think you guys should be including a couple of extra propellers so we have a full double set, but it's just my opinion. And as I said before, this is a pre-pro sample we cannot judge anything here as being the final number of propellers or anything. So we're not going to get into that. Let's grab the radio. Here is the radio. It is a very big brick because it has also built in tablet. Ah, good getting rid of that big backpack case. Just to give you an idea of the propellers, here is one of the propellers. It's a quick connect propeller for my Inspire 1. And here is the propeller. So you can see the difference. This is the propeller for the Evolve X Dynamics. It is, they are both quick connects. You can see them a little bit different here. And I'm gonna put down the Inspire. And here you can see they actually have a little bit of metal. So there's literally metal inside the propeller for a little bit of stiffness. Yeah, so before I put this away, here's another look at their, how they package propellers. It's kind of pretty neat. It's easy to manage them this way and keep them from being stacked in a hole in the case. So moving briskly along to the bird itself, up here, I'm gonna go ahead and put the battery in, but before I do that, down here you can see part of the flight controller and more importantly, right here, can you see that micro SD slot right there? That is essentially the black box for this bird. So. If something happens, you can recover the history of the flight from that card. Now, the batteries are pretty straightforward. They are, you can see it has like a release thing here. And these are basically 4S 6700 milliamp. So pretty beefy little battery, but, and 4, 4S 14.8 ish volts. And up on the end here, you can see that it has, it's able to see each individual cell and it's got plenty of pins, both for the power and for each of the four cells. So scooting that in right here and pushing it in and the battery is in. To remove it again, we would just push on both sides right here and push it in and pull out. Yes. On the back here, we get a colored light, which is of course the aircraft standard status signal. And when you see bright solid green, that means it's happy. So here you have the overall look of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and really quickly show you one of these monster, I think there's 630 kV motors. But what you really wanna see is notice the fit all the way around. It's a very tight fit here and the cocking in this motor is nice and firm and there's just absolutely no play. It feels like it's cast onto the rod. I have no idea how they got it to be this tight. On the underside of the motor, here is the signal light. Those are on all of the motor parts and they are RGB LEDs. So that means you, they come with a standard front and rear color configuration. But say you're doing a shoot and you're flying more than one bird, you can actually change and do custom colors 
on the other on one of the birds so if you want to say green and blue so green in the front and blue in the rear or purple you could do that because it's an rgb inside rgb led inside down here we have a micro usb and it has some pretty serious cooling ribs and outlet for hot air now moving past the cooling fins and right up here we have a part and a detail we are really not used to seeing if you take a closer look at this what you're seeing here is of course the drift camera so probably this lens here is your drift camera the, the down looking camera that keeps the aircraft from sliding around at low level but right next to it you'll see normally you would see a ultrasonic sonars instead here you're seeing lidar so that is a laser altimeter that is going to be able to keep your height pretty exactly much higher than you can with ultrasonic I, I do like that there's no microphones and the fit here is just really nice but let's get up to the front of course for most of us people the front is of course the business end of these drones to open it up you just basically first to get ready you just pull out this little thing and then you pull it off the camera down here really easy to use camera protector the travel protector go up here we have so it basically rotates like we expect with any one of these birds and interestingly instead of having a set of cables going up through here they have decided to use fiber optics so they basically have one strand of fiber optics from the camera and up to the multi-connector up here i'm not quite sure how that even works but supposedly it helps them reduce lag and also mechanical failure in the gimbal that works for me i like stuff that don't fail on me up here in front you see there is a removable uv filter and x dynamics is releasing a set of nd filters for this bird so there will be nd filters available right from the beginning for x dynamics evolve which I think is really cool. And the first thing I said, of course, is please make sure that it is a graduated ND so we can really kill the sky and get those magnificent cloud shots. So that is gonna be available because it is a very large, looks like a 37 millimeter or larger um, removable tread right here. I should probably try to find out if I have filters that fit already. I might because this looks big enough to use a regular photo filter. So far, I haven't really shown you anything really special. So moving along here, so far we have seen a beautifully made carbon fiber bird and 3K, so 3000 twill carbon fiber is supposed to be. Is, I believe that's some of the best carbon fiber density you can get. They were telling me they had two engineers and one on each arm. This is incredibly firm. I kind of believe that. And, and it has an advantage. Everything being that tight means there's less flex when you make changes. And that actually makes the bird fly better. So it is a benefit and it's also incredibly beautiful. But what really sets this bird apart from your average Phantom 4 Pro-ish is right here. This gimbal comes apart. Let's see if I can demonstrate that while you can see. So you push down on this little button up here and then you twist. And there you have it. So here's the entire camera. I love how easy this port is. Look at this, there's nothing that protrudes. There's nothing that's gonna get stuck anywhere here. And what is so significant about this removable is that the next camera that should be around here in about two to three months is a micro four thirds. So you can buy this bird with this gimbal. And then in the future, when you want a bigger camera, you can buy a new gimbal and put a micro four thirds camera onto this bird. So that means, and that's really of course why this bird is so big because you didn't need that big of a bird to carry this camera. This is essentially a similar camera to a, to a Phantom 4 Pro really. So that, it's a very good camera. I've been flying it and I gotta tell you the gradations, the colors and the details, it re really create beautiful details. So 
and you do have, it is not 200 megabits per second. It is, I believe it's only 60, but you can choose H.264 and you can choose H.265. So you can choose so you can choose a very aggressive compression scheme that is gonna also further get you more of those details. The camera, the images I've seen from this camera has been very satisfying. I have absolutely no problems with this camera, but being able to pick up a Micro Four Thirds, this is of course my X5 camera, that is what makes me really happy. And well, my X5 camera is never gonna fit on here, but they, are going to be having a micro four thirds that looks a bit like this, just bigger, that can fit onto here. And let me try to turn the burp upside down. So there you have it. You can see the attachment point. These are all, when you push on these pins, the pin is like gold plated and it retracts into the socket. You can also see, I think you can, you can see that the socket is moving because the stabilizing gimbal is actually inside the bird. And they have a couple of exploded view pictures on their website where you can see how the gimbal is hung inside the bird. That's an interesting choice, but it actually, it makes for a very clean setup here. Let me put this gimbal back on real quickly. So to get that back on, what we have to do is get it to the white, and then push down and twist until the red. Now you can see now the red to red. That means it's locked, and, but you start by putting the red dot to the open white, and then you just twist the socket itself, and here is the bird, and gimbal is ready again. In the legs, we have a commercial video downlink system. So this system actually come with the Konex video downlink that is being used, of course, for broadcast and many different commercial applications. It's comparable to something like Teradex. And I'm sure some of you guys have already been flowing Teradex commercially. And the Konex is, in this case here, does a 1080p 60 frames per second downlink up to 1000 meters. Okay, a bunch of you guys just screamed when you heard 1,000 meters, but here's the thing. Very, very rarely when I've been shooting commercial work for video work, have I been more than 300 meters away. So for a lot of us, this 1,000 meter video range here is really not a deal breaker. And then again, for some of you guys it is. I'm not under any delusions in that regard. There is people out there that uses four kilometers, five, six kilometers range because they need to reach out and get these shots. For myself, I have really rarely used it. The only time I use that long ranges is shooting some solar farms. I've been having some pretty long shots and I have used it for that. That said, I have never used really long ranges for an actual video shoot. And the creators of, from X Dynamics are focusing specifically on video professionals, both with the current camera that has really a beautiful setup, but also with the microphone first that they're putting together is a very specific video creator camera. And I wanna say some more about the details on that. Until they release it, and I have it in my hand here, I'm just gonna have to wait on that because I don't wanna say more than I should yet. <laughs> Anyway, so here's the bird, and now you know that it has the Konex downlink, and that goes to the controller that has the antennas built into the lid. So here is the controller, and it opens up like this, and you can see here's the top, and here's the bottom of the controller. I think what I should do is turn the bird on, so we can get the usual picture of the wall that you guys are so used to. To turn the bird on, I just tap down and hold. And after it pulls all the way across, it is turned on. Next, I have to turn the controller on. So I'm just pressed and now I'm holding. 
you hear the fans are starting up. What is it with modern drones? They're all somehow related to vacuum cleaners and hair dryers. So here we go. And this is starting up right now. There is the main screen up here. And if you look right here, that tells you this is a for internal use only. So we have to be a little lenient with some of the features. They're simply not completely defined yet. And as I went through a lot of the menus, a lot of features that is going to be in the bird are simply still grayed out in the menus. So now up on top is the camera view. And down here in the bottom, I see the evolve and I'm just going to tap begin. And now we're looking at the table over here on the shoulder, the usual suspect. And when I turn that, you can see the gimbal is coming up and that guy looks kind of familiar. And so my next down here, you have still camera and over here you have video camera start. And here you have the exposure. So on the, up on the right shoulder, you have the exposure settings and on the left shoulder, you have the gimbal pitch. Still camera over here and video camera start here. Up in the corner here, you have attitude mode, GPS and custom mode there. So I'm literally too close to this and I'm also messing with it because the receivers are on the back side of this but I was testing the camera dynamic range yesterday and I found out I actually had to go sit on another table in the room in order to have a solid link. So I had to get like five, six yards away from the bird. I have no idea why it is that way, but I'm sure they're going to further improve that. Anyway, here's, that was a little bit of video. As you can see, the video here seems inaccurate. So if I go back out and go to start into the drone, and go to video here. And then right here, I go to setting and white balance. Let's see if we have cloudy, maybe. Nope. Cool white. Yeah, cool white looks about right. So we're going to take that and go back out and try to record in cool white. Does that look cool? Kind of cool, right? One thing I want to show you here, they have a cool thing on the gimbal pitch. See, now it's coming down and I'm letting go, but you see how it slowed down the pitch? So it has a soft stop on that gimbal move. I look terrible from that angle. Never photograph people from below their chin, especially when they're over 50. That's just a rule, trust me on that. So on the menu here, we have picture, so that's still camera and we have video right here. Up here we have the distance bar. That's the distance bar and here's the altimeter that literally clicks in, counts the numbers on the right here. And you have a speedometer on the left where the acceler acceleration kind of comes up just like in a car by moving the needle up. But basically we have a GPS driven map like you typically see on an iPad. And you can, you can toggle it and you can put the map up on the big screen if you want to. However, in reality, you really don't use it up there. If you go in here, down here, when you go back out like I did, then you can see the photo album comes up like that. And you can go back out again, go to the drone. So now I'm seeing the drone and I can go over to me my profile picture right here. And then it says flight records right here. So by tapping on that, I get all the most recent flights. And up here comes total mileage, total flight. It says 14 right now and 75 minutes of flight time. And it says I'm a pilot level two, whatever that means. Um, all these options up here, the flight time, maximum altitude, the date or the distance, you can actually tap on say distance and now you sort it. So the shortest distance was zero feet. And if I toggle it around, 
it says that the longest distance was 1259 feet. So I can sort it based on different, so here's a two minute flight, and here is nine minutes, 15 seconds was the longest flight. And they're coming up with an online portal, but you're gonna be able to choose whether or not you wanna subscribe or be in the portal and publicize or share any of this information, so you have control over that. It has a built-in map, and the map has will show you no-fly zones, but they do not restrict you from taking off in a no-fly zone. They just show the circle. X Dynamics realize that a lot of you guys are flying jobs legally inside traditional no-fly zones where amateurs should not be flying. So they're not going to interrogate you about that, but the map shows you what how the area is listed. You remember I told you that the antennas for the Konex radio link is here in the back, so you kind of want to have them up a little bit so you can get good push. And interestingly, they have managed, you can see when I'm balancing this on my fingers, it is pretty much neutral balance right here. It has a very comfortable balance in your hands and the radios sticks right here, feeling very comfortable. I'm very happy with it. They actually also have a pilot's harness that connects and holds the radio really nicely. I'm not big on harnesses, so I've actually been flying it like this, but I have that box in the backpack case with the official harness. On the back of this radio, you're gonna see two things. There's a micro USB over here, and if you pull up this, there you see a HDMI out. That's a micro HDMI that has 1080p, 60 frames per second video out. So in case you're doing a shoot and you need to put either record it to a broadcast van or put it up on a big screen, 1080p, 60 is available right out of here. One of the other cool little features here, having this integrated is when you first start up, it presents you with this fly checklist. So current flight mode, compass, gimbal, camera, drone battery, ground station power, and SD card. It looks like I forgot to put the SD card in. Let me see if I can, and you guys can see this. Down here in the bottom, if I go down here, we're in Los Angeles right now, and you can see it shows the map. And you can actually also throw this map up on the big screen so that's basically the map graphics interface you have at the bottom. I like to zoom in just by doing like this. So I pretty much just see my operation area. That way it's very easy on the map to see where the bird is compared to you. Like again, I said, you can throw this up on the screen here, but I've never really been tempted to doing that because I like seeing the birds, bird's eye perspective from the drone's camera. So let me turn this radio off and I'm gonna turn the bird off and we're gonna show, take the radio apart a little bit here. Having turned it off, going to the back side here, you can see here is a tripod tread. That is a tripod tread, so you can literally mount this radio on a traditional tripod, which is very nice if you're doing some long shots or just like a crane shot or something and it's gonna be there for a long time, you don't wanna hold it. Just mount it on top of a tripod, it's not going anywhere. So here's the tripod tread. Up here is your charging plug to charge it. And finally down here is a cool feature. You see this little slider here, you slide it and you pull down and here is the battery. So you can actually have multiple batteries for a busy flight day. I think that's nice. And also an other black box micro SD card is sitting right here that you can stick a micro SD card in also in the radio. So there you have it, that's the radio. I love the design of this radio. And let me put this down now. Let me give you a real quick look here. This is, of course, my radio for the Inspire. And then I put my regular iPad Air up here on top. So it becomes pretty big. Here is the radio and there's the Inspire radio. And you can see how the radio folds clamps out here and has the screen. So they really end up probably being about the same size. They just 
do it differently. Grabbing the bird from over here. Notice how the propellers are black and with a white ring. Some of the motors here has a white ring and some of the motors don't. So that's the black propeller over there. And the cool thing is they have different shaft thickness. So I can't actually make it go on here. I'm trying this one instead. And it goes right down, turn the motor and it's in place. And when you play with it here, there's really no play. So it's very easy to install it. Let me try to grab one more white one. It goes right down, locks in place. There's no play. That's how easy they are to install. And of course, we all use the snap on propellers these days. Remember back when we had to actually screw them on or put a bolt? It was a big mess. I like quick connects. So there's the bird. All carbon fiber. So it is a radio friendly lid up here. Carbon fiber frame all the way across and back up to here. Down on the bottom, we have a metal looking, feels like a plastic bottom. We have air intake up here and we have an air exhaust here. We have the Konex radio system in the legs and the legs are made to be sacrificial. So they're pretty easy to replace if you do have a really hard landing. But I gotta tell you, landings or crash landings are kind of becoming a thing of the past. And when you fly it, that's what's really interesting. It is just a very easy flying, grin on your face bird. It's super easy to fly. So it's like you're not thinking about flying. You can just think about doing your video shoot. Anyway, so there you have it. Stay tuned because we are gonna be both looking at the cameras and we're also gonna be looking at the Micro Four Thirds camera for this thing, which is of course a whole different camera. And that's really the justification for this. And one very important thing to tell you when we talk about the Micro Four Thirds camera, you saw the connector here. X Dynamics are committed to making the next generations of this bird use the same connector, the same gimbal mount. So that means if you buy a Micro Four Thirds now, you'll be able to use it in the future on your whatever X Dynamics bird you pick up a couple of years down the road. I think that's a huge feature because I remember the scream that went out in the ether and in the force when it became clear that Inspire 2 did not accept anybody's X5 raw cameras. And we understand why, but it was still pain for a lot of us realizing we cannot take our XT camera and transfer it to an Inspire 2. So I think they have made a very, very valid choice making committing to a gimbal mount and making it forward portable. And if you're interested in the X Dynamics Evolve, do me a favor, go to their website, click on the contact and tell them you're interested. And also give them some of your thoughts about how you would like to use this bird and what it is you like about it. Because my, me personally, I feel that it's just the overall package that gives me a lot of joy. And the price point, oh, the price point is gonna be about $2,500, actually $2,499. That's a thousand dollars more than a Phantom 4 Pro, but the Phantom 4 Pro cannot be upgraded with a Micro Four Thirds camera. So having this lift capacity, I think that is not a completely unreasonable price point. And when I'm saying that, that of course is because you have your tablet included here. So you have your $500 iPad, you have your Konex 1080 60 video downlink and you have upgradable to a Micro Four Thirds. So that's the platform you're getting for $2,499. I actually, having flown it and having caressed it a little bit too much, I feel it's a good price point. Again, that is up to you guys and some of you guys are gonna think it's terrible and some of you guys are gonna be going, ooh, that's like a flying Leica. I like this a lot. Yeah. Or a flying contacts camera. But sadly enough, flying contacts, 
contacts cameras out of business. Horrible thought, but that's a different video. Stay tuned for more videos and make sure you click subscribe down in the corner. You guys have a great one and we'll see you in the next video.